Before I start, I just want to say that the talk discusses the theme of sexual assault. So, <laughs> I want to die a martyr for every woman who refused to smile, or didn't just keep walking, or used her pepper spray, or fought back, or made sure cat calls were met with claws. I want to tell every woman that her voice is her most powerful weapon. Use it. I want girls to write war hymns and paint their nails with the blood of boys who are just being boys. I want accountability and retribution and for men to stop asking for forgiveness and start asking for permission for silence to mean no. For I'm tired to mean no, for slow down to mean no, for no, to finally mean no and not convince me. Brock Turner got six months in prison, served three for raping an unconscious girl because the judge didn't want two minutes of bad judgment to ruin his life and his swimming career. Meanwhile, his victim is drowning. Rape used to be punishable by death, and now it is punished with an Oscar, an inauguration, a Super Bowl ring. Rape culture is singing along to blurred lines, I know you want it. Rape culture is using women's bodies to sell Bud Light, erase no from your vocabulary. Rape culture is calling assault a sex scandal when we would never call murder a death debacle. But we are ready to be heard. We demand to be heard. Men call it a witch hunt while girls are afraid for their lives. Janice Jackson was only 14 when she was killed for turning a man down. 14, also the number of women who were murdered last year for saying no. 14, when we should be dotting our eyes with hearts. 14, when we should be wearing strawberry lip gloss. 14, when the only knives that should be on our minds are backstabbing teenagers and not the man on the street corner. 14, I ate cherry-flavored fun dip until my teeth turned red. At the time, the only symbol I could attach to that image was slightly sour candy. Not curious what the undertaker would think of me if I would remind her of her children trick-or-treating on Halloween. The only ghouls and goblins we are afraid of are the monsters that have found their way from under our beds and into our homes and our classrooms and our churches and the White House. I want to put beware of girl signs on every front lawn, because maybe that will teach men that intruders get bitten. Every voice has power. My voice has power. Your voice has power. I know it doesn't always seem that way. Some days it feels as though you will never be heard. I have been told my whole life that if I wanted to make a real difference, I had to become somebody. That is to say, I had to be recognizable, I had to be known. No one would listen to an unnamed voice, let alone that of a teenage girl. As girls, we are taught from the time we are little to be polite and quiet and accommodating, especially to adults, especially to men. For example, today as a 17-year-old girl, I am not a hugger. And as a 17-year-old, that's usually enough to keep people from hugging me. But as a child, you don't get the option to not be a hugger. You are told it is rude to rebuff the advances of someone that has been presented to you as harmless. You are told to hug them back, to smile, to be polite. You are being told I was being told that our voices did not matter. I know you're probably thinking, it's just a hug, get over it, and you might be right. But what about when it isn't just a hug? Over 150 then girls, now women, were told that former USA gymnastics doctor Larry Nassar was harmless, that he was just doing his job, that he was an adult and was to be respected while he used his power to sexually assault and molest the girls under his care for decades under the guise of medical treatment. These girls carried with them the ideas that had been drilled into them in childhood. Do not say no to adults. Don't make a scene. Be polite. All of these things are the same as saying you do not have a voice. In addition to the sentiments we hear on loop as young girls, these women 
all women grow up and into a culture inundated with locker room talk and what was she wearing and why did you lead him on and how could you let this happen? All of these words translate to you do not have a voice. Nevertheless, each of these women, these survivors, despite every roadblock put in front of them, spoke up. They spoke up and spoke up until they were heard and they were heard. Larry Nassar has been sentenced to a total of 361 years in prison for the crimes he committed against these brave and unbreakable women. The president of Michigan State and the members of the USA Gymnastics Board have stepped down. Their voices made this happen. Their relentless quest for justice made this happen. They ignored every person telling them that they did not have a voice and they won. What these women accomplished is proof that your voice and your story, no matter who you are, have power. And perhaps more importantly, it is a testament to the power of no. Although these women, as is the case with many survivors, did not feel as though they were able to say no at the time, these women are saying no more. No more, but he's a respected doctor. No more, do you really want to ruin his career? No more, it's better to just keep quiet. You don't want to cause problems, no more. A less isolated example of the power of our voices and stories has been seen within the Time's Up and Me Too movements that have been making their way through Hollywood, Washington DC, and social media the past few months that rose out of allegations of sexual misconduct and abuse by Hollywood elites. The inundation of these stories of abuses and assaults by powerful men have been extraordinarily difficult for many survivors to hear, and in many cases has forced them to relive their own traumas, but have also been so empowering. Because for the first time, people want to hear our stories. People are listening to women, people are listening to each other. People of all genders from every walk of life are coming forward with their stories. They are saying, me too. They are saying, enough. They have created a movement. That is the power of your story. One in three women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted in their lifetime. The Me Too movement puts faces, names, and stories to those statistics. It is the power of the voices of these survivors that started an avalanche. Their stories broke the silence. They said, no more. I say, no more. We are forced to navigate a culture where a rapist with a talent does not lose any fans, but a victim who speaks up does. We teach our daughters that boys are pulling their hair or pushing them down on the playground because we like them, because they like them, and we expect our sons not to take these same sentiments into the world with them. We have easy access to media that degrades and devalues women and the female body. We are a culture with a category of pornography called rape fantasy. The only thing we have to combat this culture, this way of living, is our voice. It is the power of our stories. It is the power of no. Thank you. Thank you.